King Ulysses, Alfred Lord Tennyson portrays the Victorian thirst and hunger for intellectual food in words like I cannot rest from travel, I will drink life to its least, always roaming with a hungry heart. How dull it is to pause, the great spirit yearning and desire to follow knowledge like a sinking star, to strive, to seek, to find and not to yield. As an explorer of the classical heritage of the past, Tennyson was unsurpassed in the Victorian age. Many of his poems drew on classical mythology for both subject matter and poetic mode. Ulysses is also based on the theme of classical mythology of the Greek gods. Ulysses is a dramatic monologue. There is a single speaker who presents his perspective and comments on the subject of the social issues that concerned the Victorian people, such as the government's exploration, relationship, and family life. Also, not forgetting aging, death, and most importantly, friendship. The Greek legendary king of Ithaca, Ulysses, also called Odysseus, was a great warrior and a king who led a victorious war in the Trojan War. After many years of war and many years of sailing in the sea, he journeys back home to his wife Penelope or Penelope and his beloved son Telemachus in Ithaca. But after living many years of adventurous life, many adventurous years with his followers at sea and at war, he finds the life of a king as dull and uninteresting, he does not find himself enjoying doing nothing and sitting by the fireside with an old wife. He doesn't want to rest from traveling around and he wishes to drink life to its least. He, he wishes to drink life to its best. He wishes to live life in an adventurous on the edge type of life. He fondly remembers the time when he enjoys greatly and also suffered greatly sometimes alone and sometimes along with his friends that was what made him famous his adventurous lifestyle made him famous he had always roamed with a hungry heart hungry to see the unseen and know the unknown knowing new cultures new climates new places new government and delighted himself greatly in the battle with his peers during the battle of troy to pause from all this kind of energy to take a break and end that kind of life for him felt rusty useless and empty and dim this kind of idle king's life was meaningless to him life was much more than breathing for him life is not for someone to be sitting and waiting for eternal silence he says eternal silence which means death but life to him is a bringer of new things. It is such a waste of time for him to just sit there and display himself for three years, sitting as a king on the throne, doing nothing, staying safe and defended. It felt meaningless to him. His gray spirit, his old spirit, though it is old, his old soul still yearns and longs to follow knowledge like a sinking star that keeps shining brighter as it approaches death and falls into places beyond human knowledge. Then he turns his attention to his son Telemachus, whom he gives the kingship who dedicatedly fulfills the kingly duties. He calls Telemachus a kind and patient person, a patient son who can lead the people with wisdom. He also does the household duties of worshipping the gods and taking care of his mother. In the next line, he sees the ships, the vessels and the dark gloomy seas. The dark gloomy seas seem to be calling out to him. His mariner friends with whom he had sailed the seas and struggled side by side on his past adventurous journeys, he called them free hearts and free foreheads. Though they are old, they still have lives and he calls out to them saying that they should not live like they haven't walked with the gods. He also calls them to sail with him to find a newer world. He tells them that they might be washed down into the sea or they might reach the happy isles, the paradise to see the great Achilles with whom they fought side by side in the battle of Troy. Though they have sacrificed many things, they have also earned many things. And now they may not have the strength of the past when they used to move the heavens and the earth. But he calls them, 
he calls their unity as one equal temper of the heroic hearts which has been made weak by time and fate but they still have the inspiration in their hearts and nothing according to him can break their will to strive to seek to find and to never surrender to never yield or never give up in short the fire of the adventure still burns in their hearts and the thirst for knowledge and to seek new things will be quenched only with the coming of their eternal silence with the coming of their death and until then they will never give up there was a short explanation of ulysses by alfred lord tennyson i'll see you in the next video thank you